Hey guys, so Christmas is coming and I thought I'd give you guys a list of movies that you should watch because I like recommending mu movies to you guys. So here's my list. Die Hard, Brazil, The Nightmare Before Christmas. That's it. That, that's all of them. Hey wow, it turns out that most Christmas movies suck balls or have nothing to do with Christmas. I mean, like two out of three of those movies take place during Christmas, but they aren't really Christmas movies. So here's a list of awesome documentaries instead. Now there are plenty of good documentaries out there and probably a lot of fantastic ones that I haven't seen yet. You already know that Bowling for Columbine is pretty awesome and I've already recommended these ones in my top 10 of the year videos. So here's some shit that you maybe have heard of, maybe haven't, but it's good. Starting off this list is a film called This Film film is not yet rated. It's funny, informative, and god damn it do I agree with it. Why people can't go see this terrific movie just because it has, you know, this word in it. You know, it just seems so kind of childish. And this movie does a great job pointing out just how fucking ridiculous and retarded the people in the MPAA are. I've already explained that films like A Single Man have been rated PG in Canada while it stays R in the United States because there's gay people in it. But think about this. There was no gay sex in any of the movies I watched when I was a kid, but I turned out to be a perverted faggot anyway, so fuck you MPAA. Fuck is also allowed, but usually just once, so filmmakers are urged to choose their fuck carefully. A simple fuck you is okay. But referring to the sexual act as in, may I please fuck you, or I enjoy getting fucked, is totally unacceptable. If a character says that, especially while abusing an illegal narcotic, the film is rated R. R means restricted. No children 17 or under without parent or guardian. There may be sexual themes, frank sex talk, sexualized nudity, tough language, and tough violence, like a thousand handicapped orphans decimated by a hail of gunfire. But if the film depicts realistic baby making in a position other than missionary, acts involving oral sex with females, anal sex, fetishes, more than two humans, or what the MPAA deems aberrational behavior, that film could get slapped with an NC-17. NC-17 means no children 17 or under, period. An NC-17 may range from a senior citizen gangbang to a foreign Pedro Almodovar film, but art films make people feel funny especially the ones with aberrational behavior. Next up is a Canadian documentary called The World According to Monsanto. Now, if you don't know what Monsanto is, then you should probably see this movie, especially if you live in the United States. Monsanto's just a chemical company that made DDT and Agent Orange. Oh, and also they're controlling a shit ton of the food in the United States. It's probably one of the most evil corporations on the planet, so maybe you should do yourself a favor and watch this. First of all, um, as there's a high incidence of mastitis in the cows, There'll be pus in the milk. And very, very importantly, very substantial increases in levels of IGF-1 or insulinite growth factor 1. There have been a series of studies somewhere in the region of 60 relating increased levels of IGF-1 and breast, colon and prostate cancers. Monsanto did not deny that they made the offer of one to two million dollars at this meeting. They later on tried to say, oh, this was an offer of research. So anyway, that's what happened in Canada. The drug was not approved. So the European Parliament, based on what revelations in Canada, banned it forever. And then all of a sudden, we three, Margaret Hayden, Gerard Lambert, and I were dismissed for disobedience. Next is a Werner Herzog documentary called Grizzly Man. This film tells the story of Timothy Treadwell, an eccentric and possibly insane man who decided to go live with grizzly bears and document the whole thing on video. It's funny, it's depressing, and some of the footage is actually pretty fucking amazing. Go see it! I want to introduce you to one of the key role players in this year's expedition. The bear's name is the Grinch. The Grinch has come on to be one of the more frequent bears here in the grizzly maze. Um, the Grinch is a female of about five years of age. Oh, hi, Grinch. Hi. And she has kind of an aggressive attitude. Hi. If I turn around too much, she'll bite me. It's okay. Hi. How are you? How are you? Don't you do that. Don't you do that. Back off. Don't do it. It's okay. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. 
I love you, I'm sorry. Next is a movie called Dear Zachary, a letter to a son about his father. This is possibly the most depressing movie I've ever seen. You will cry. You will feel like shit. If you plan on eating any food during this movie, you won't be able to finish it. I'm gonna let the trailer speak for this one. Unfortunately, she made it to Canada before they could arrest her. On the afternoon of November 7th, 2001, my sister called to tell me that Dr. Andrew Bagby, my closest friend since the age of seven, had been killed. My name's Kurt, and I'm a filmmaker. Andrew appeared in every movie I made growing up. Jesus Christ, Kurt, Kurt what do you want? I mean, no, no, I just need, I'm, I'm just... I decided to make a movie, to travel far and wide, to interview everyone who ever knew and loved Andrew. Kurt, I just got a call from Mrs. Bagby. The abbreviated version is that bitch uh, held a press conference and announced that she's four months pregnant with Andrew's baby. They can't prove it until the child's born. If it is true that Bagby's are going to sue for custody... She named the little boy Zachary. To seek custody of the only grandson they would ever have, Andrew's parents moved to St. John's, Newfoundland, where Shirley Turner was unbelievably allowed to walk free on bail while awaiting extradition. In order to see Zachary, Kate and David were forced to stomach a civil relationship with the woman they knew murdered their only son. Next up is Jesus Camp. Do you like getting mad? Good, because this movie's full of mad. I don't think I've ever sat through this movie once without yelling at the screen. Each line of hypocrisy that they spout is just begging for a comeback. It's a film about the crazy American evangelicals that try to militarize children, and there's a lot of them. Although this movie does have a scene with Ted Haggard bashing gay people, the film was released in 2006, so it wasn't really able to comment on the scandal involving him, crystal methamphetamine, and a three-year affair with a male escort. So we don't have to debate about what we should think about homosexual activity. It's written in the Bible. Not gay, not gay, not gay. Hey guys, I'm not gay. If you shout, you have morals really loud, then maybe everyone will believe it. Regardless, this movie's infuriating. See it if you want to be really pissed off. I can go into a playground of kids that don't know anything about Christianity, lead them to the Lord in a matter of just no time at all, and, and just moments later, they can be seeing visions and hearing the voice of God because they're so open. They are so usable in Christianity. Where should we be putting our efforts? Where should we be putting our focus? I'll tell you where our enemies are putting it. They're putting it on the kids. They're going into the schools. You go into Palestine and I can take you to some websites that will absolutely shake you to your foundations and show you photographs of where they're taking their kids to camps like we take our kids to Bible camps and they're putting hand grenades in their hands. They're teaching them how to put on bomb belts. They're teaching them how to use rifles. They're teaching them how to use machine guns. It's no wonder with that kind of intense training and discipling that those young people are ready to kill themselves for the cause of Islam. I want to see young people who are as committed to the cause of Jesus Christ as the young people are to the cause of Islam. I want to see them as radically laying down their lives for the gospel as, as they are uh, over in, in Pakistan and in Israel and, and Palestine and all those different places, you know, because we have Excuse me, but we have the truth. <laughs> Next up is Planet Earth, but you might as well include Life, Frozen Planet, anything else that David Attenberg has written for the BBC, and Human Planet, yeah, that one's good too. I know these are TV series, but the production quality on these are kind of fucking fantastic. This is definitely something you want to watch on Blu-ray! These series are made by extremely talented and gifted people, and a lot of the time you'll be asking yourself, how the fuck did they get that shot? And the glue that holds everything together is George Fenton and the BBC Symphony Orchestra, who can transform shots of nature into an epic experience. And please, try to find the versions where David Attenborough is actually narrating it and not some replacement because they think you're too stupid to be able to understand a fucking British accent. I mean, do the guy a favor, he's fucking educating you. Crocodile's jaws snap tight like a steel trap. Once they have a hold, they never let go. It took over an hour to drown this full grown bull. <laughs> Surprise their prey, crocodiles must strike with lightning speed. The 
here, only the narrowest line separates life from death. Next up is a documentary called The Union, The Business Behind Getting High. This Canadian film is both hilarious and informative, and it completely debunks every myth your grandparents told you about pot. This is a great film to watch, especially now that two states have moved towards decriminalization. Can we please just sign a petition for Obama to watch this movie or something? As the movie explains, it's less about the health hazards and more about the fact that people are making money by keeping it illegal. Profit motive, fuck yeah! See ya. 1974, the Heath Tulin study. Ronald Reagan announces, the most reliable scientific sources say permanent brain damage is one of the inevitable results of the use of marijuana. This study became the foundation of the government and other special interest groups claim that marijuana kills brain cells. Here's what they didn't tell you. After six years of requests, how the study was conducted was finally revealed. Instead of administering 30 joints a day for one year, Dr. Heath used a method of pumping 63 Colombian strength joints through a gas mask within five minutes over three months. They suffocated the monkeys. What they did is they put these gas masks basically on their face and they pumped pot into it, but without additional oxygen. So after X amount of time, the brain shut down. Well, if you suffocate, the first thing that's gonna happen is your brain cells are gonna die with lack of oxygen. So what they did is they suffocated the monkey, showed all these dead brain cells, and then, uh, then went on to associate it by saying that cannabis use causes your brain cells to die. People say, well, you can abuse marijuana. Well, shit, you can abuse cheeseburgers too. You know, you don't go around closing Burger King because you can abuse something. I can take a fucking fork and jam it in my eyeballs. Does that mean forks should be illegal? You know, I could jump off a bridge. Should we outlaw bridges? Let's nerf the world. Last on my list is The Corporation from, you guessed it, Canada. My nationalism! This is one of my favorite documentaries ever made. This important documentary shows the birth and growth of the corporation historically and its impact on modern society. It's kind of fucking eye-opening. And since corporations are considered legal people, the film cleverly grades the corporation based on how psychopathic it is. If I take a gun and shoot you, that's criminal. If I expose you to some chemicals, which knowingly are going to kill you, what difference is there? The difference is that it takes longer to kill you. We are now in the midst of a major cancer epidemic, and I have no doubt, and I have documented the basis for this, that industry is largely responsible for this overwhelming epidemic of cancer, in which one in every two men get cancer in their lifetimes, and one in every three women get cancer in their lifetimes. You know, it wouldn't be such a bad thing if corporations had the same rights as people, because it seems as though they have extra rights. As a person, I'd go to jail if I tried to do half the shit that corporations do. Something's definitely wrong here. All publicly traded corporations have been structured through a series of legal decisions to have a peculiar and disturbing characteristic. They are required by law to place the financial interests of their owners above competing interests. In fact, the corporation is legally bound to put its bottom line ahead of everything else, even the public good. Well, that's it for my list, so start watching them. I plan to make another one of these documentary lists at some point, so send me some suggestions. Also, the creators of the corporation uploaded a free version to YouTube, so fucking check it out. Otherwise, have a very informative Christmas. Why do Christmas movies have to fucking suck? And it'll send me to the ground, to reality. And I'll deal with my disparity. Do you love me now? Do you love me now?